Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today where we're going to be dis discussing everything that is glitter pattern. So we're gonna be going over some popular print methods and also best practices because this is a new product and if you're not already working with it, it can be a little bit difficult to work with or get to show up correctly on your garment. So we're gonna be going over a lot of best practices. Hi Denise, thanks for commenting in. Be sure to comment in, tell us where you're joining us from and I will go ahead and get started. So. Up here on my computer, I have the stalls website launched and I am on the patterns page. So getting started with pattern glitter patterns best practices, we want to start with choosing the pattern and choosing the right pattern for the glitter option. Okay, so glitter has a tendency to not show up as vibrant as the matte option. So you wanna be careful when it comes to the type of colors that you're choosing. So I'm going to scroll down and look, see in my selection here, I have anywhere from Stahl's Creative Studio patterns to Sparkleberry and Realtree and also Spectra. So Spectra is the patterns that came over from Imprintables Warehouse. So whenever we combine with them, those are the patterns. So if you are looking for Imprintables patterns that you are purchasing from them, they are available in this option here. Okay, we also collaborated with Realtree and Sparkleberry, and then we have Stahl's patterns as well. So I'm gonna go to Stahl's patterns because this is the one where we get to custom choose what colors go into our patterns. So this is gonna load, it's gonna give me a variety of categories to choose from. And I'm gonna go with geometric and choose from a variety of different patterns that fit this category. So those are gonna load for me and you can see all of our options here. All right, so I'm going to choose the mind play option and go to select color. So when I scroll up, I can see my actual pattern showing up here and a variety of popular color combinations down here at the bottom. All right, so I just want to reiterate when choosing these colors, we need to choose things that are going to be very vibrant and really pop off of the pattern if we're going to be putting it on glitter. This is what's going to give us the best standout finish and really make it show up on the garment that you're applying it to. So I'm gonna switch back to my regular cam because this is an option of a pattern that did not show up correctly because of the colors that we put into it. So we put a really bright red in there, but then we paired it with a mint and a light pink. So it's showing up pretty good here, but whenever I put this onto my garment, it's going to start um, actually not really showing up that well, okay? So this is a prime example of a pattern that should be showing up very vibrantly and these colors should really pop and it would if it were on a matte finish. But because of these glitter particles, it's starting to hide a lot of those colors. So we wanna go with vibrant colors that you're seeing right here. So we have a lot of bright neons and pastels in there and we have these options over here as well. So whenever you're choosing your colors, just be sure to choose colors that are going to be very vibrant. So back at the computer, this is one that wouldn't necessarily show up that well. I would want to maybe switch to this instead because it has a very bright finish to it as opposed to something minimalistic. So that's one of our first best practices is choosing the right pattern and the right colors in your pattern for your uh, order, okay? So those are gonna show up the best if you're using a bright and vibrant um, color mixture in your patterns, okay? Uh, Sparkleberry does very well with this. So we'll go ahead back to home and if we click on the Sparkleberry option, a variety of categories are gonna come up for you to choose from as well. But you can even see from up here, these, um, this pattern right here, all those bright, vibrant colors in there. This is something that she does very well. So it's going to show up very nicely on our glitter patterns because she's using bright neons and bright mints and purples and all of those styles of hues that show up correctly. Okay, 
So that's our first best practice. So that's one a key point to take away from this presentation. And then the next is artwork creation. So whenever we are choosing our artwork, we want to go with um, styles of designs that are either solid or paired with another contrasting color that's going to bring out the design that you're applying. And you'll see that whenever we do some of the applications at the heat press a little later, how I paired solid colors that were uh, contrasting and brought out some of the colors within the pattern. Uh, now, before you send your design to cut, you wanna make sure that it is not in a mirrored image, okay? So we want it to stay positive because we are going to be doing a masking process, all right? And I'll actually walk you through those steps now. So I have CADWORKS Live up on my computer. CADWORKS Live is a free online artwork program and you can see that I have little Peter Cottontail brought up on my CADWORKS Live. Perfect for this weekend since we have Easter coming up, but this is a solid piece of clip art. So I am fine with sending this design straight to the vinyl cutter to cut. All right, so I already have my dimensions set up up here. All I have to do is go to file and send to vector cut. All right, so I already have that brought up in vector cut. You can see that here. I can size in here as well if I need to, and I can mirror or rotate anything that I need to do before sending my design. Now again, with patterns, this is not something that you want to mirror. Usually when we're working with heat transfer vinyl, we have to do uh, a mirror image before sending because we need to get that the back of that adhesive exposed. Well, it's already exposed. With the patterns, it's not exposed, so that's why we're cutting in a positive image, masking the material from the backing that it comes on, and then applying, okay? So I'm gonna keep this in a positive image, and I already have my computer set up to my GraphTech C6000 Plus, and I'm going to hit Send Cut Job, all right? So it's gonna start cutting over here at the vinyl cutter. The style of pattern is Sparkleberry, and it is the watercolor stripe that is offered on that. Okay, so with the graph tech, you can see that it's cutting this image now. I have it set at the glitter setting. So the settings are actually going to be very similar to what you're already cutting your glitter flake heat transfer vinyl at. So you don't have to worry about having to know a different setting. I will say though, if you are cutting a little, a lot of glitter, be sure that you are um, testing, doing a test cut before you send your designs to cut because the blade can tend to dull a lot more if you are cutting a lot of it. All right, so here all I'm doing is I'm going to find my weed box and weed away the excess material just so that I can find out where my design starts that I can get it cut off of here. Okay, so have my design, I'm gonna start weeding away. All right, so I can see that my design starts here. I use a weed border so that I know exactly where my design is located on my cutter and on my roll of heat transfer vinyl. So I'm gonna take an X-Acto knife and trim this piece off. And typically, if I was going to do a job of these, I would be able to gang a bunch of these up on a roll. So I would be able to add more over on this side where there's right now a good bit of waste. But since the, this vinyl cutter does cut sheets, we can go ahead and trim this off so that we're only working with the part that was cut. All right, so now I can save this for another design. All right, so now for the weeding part, this is a fairly easy product to weed. So we can just go ahead and peel this back from its carrier. And I'm going to go ahead and weed off the borders as well. Another best practice, whenever you're setting your origin, you can see there that there is a white strip all right, so the pattern isn't all patterns all the way across. It starts back from the edge of the roll. So be sure that you're starting your origin 
on the pattern before you send the design to cut or else it's going to start cutting down on this lower edge and you're going to get a block of white in your pattern. All right, so that's as simple as that. So this pattern is going to show up really well because we just used a silhouette of a bunny and now it's a solid piece. So there's nothing I really need to pair with it in order to make this really pop off the garment. All right, for my next step, I need to take my masking. Okay, so if you're ordering patterns and masking with us already, there is a masking that you order whenever you check out, okay? What masking that you need to use with the glitter patterns is a high tack mask okay so we have medium tack and high tack whenever you're working with glitter patterns you need to use the high tack mask okay so with this all I'm going to do is center it and work my way from the middle out okay I'm gonna do the same thing with my squeegee too I'm gonna go from the center and work my way out Right now what we're doing is getting this to transfer over to our masking so that we have the adhesive on the back of the patterns exposed so that it'll transfer to our garment. Okay, so I'm gonna go around the edges, make sure that it's picking that up for me. Now because this is a very high tack mask, you really have to work with it whenever peeling it off, it can get a little tricky. So best practices for masking. One step is to not cut your design too deep on your vinyl cutter because it causes an issue with the pattern being able to transfer correctly. All right, so what I'm do is picking down the edge of this in order to get it to stay down because I know the center of my bunny started to transfer, okay? So, I'm going to set my squeegee down there. I'm going to peel this carrier back. You can see that ear started to lift off, but this is such a tacky backing that we can just press that down as we move along. Probably could have squeegeed a little better. And it's okay to go back and have to squeegee a little bit in order to get this to transfer. Whenever you are squeegeeing, be sure to use a lot of pressure. I wasn't using a ton of pressure. That's why it's starting to lift up a little bit, but the more pressure you use, the better it's going to transfer over to your carrier. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is lift this up a little bit, smooth out my edges, and then transfer over to my sheet. All right, and we have one little piece here that didn't quite flatten out. There we go. Now that it is on its backing, all I have to do is squeegee it again. Make sure all those little air bubbles are out. And then now I'm good to go and apply this to the garment. Okay. So before we move to the press, just want to make sure I'm getting to the comments that are coming in. Doesn't seem like we have too many questions. Windmill Apparel and Promotions designs are a challenge with patterns. Yes, they can be if you are following the right to best practices like pairing with solid um, heat transfer vinyl such as fashion film or glitter flake, anything to really bring out the pattern. And or also uh, doing solid images instead of text because sometimes depending on the garment that you're doing, it can tend to get lost in the apparel. So that's why we are teaching you guys some best practices today in order to apply these correctly so that it is selling popularly with your customers. All right, so I'm unloading my 16 by 20 and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my 11 by 15 so that I can thread my design on. All right, so this just locks in place. It has a little pin on the bottom of it, and there's a quick latch lever here that's gonna lock this platen in place while I'm working with it so it doesn't start wobbling on me. Okay, before I apply my garment, or my transfer to my garment, I wanna make sure I'm doing a quick preheat and testing my pressure. I loaded in a new platen, so that's gonna require me to test my pressure to make sure I'm still at a good pressure. If I'm not able to close it down easily, that means my pressure is too high. So I'm gonna lighten that up. 
and test again. Glitter Patterns is going to be at about a medium pressure. So that'll read anywhere between a four and a six. Now since I tested my pressure, I know my t-shirt now has its preheat done that released all the moisture and the wrinkles in the fabric. Now my application is ready for my transfer. Okay, so I'm just going to place this down a couple inches from the collar since we're doing a children's tee here. This garment was also sourced from Ruffle Butts, okay? So they do a lot of trendy apparel for children, so keep them in mind if that's a market that you're reaching right now. Make sure we don't have anything that's going to transfer over to our garment on our transfer masking. Okay, so now we're going to just apply this at 302 degrees. Right now my heat press is set at 330, so I'm gonna drop that down. That's not a problem for my application. I can still go ahead and apply that. The only time that it would be an issue is if I'm applying on a style of t-shirt that is heat sensitive, okay? So I'm gonna drop that down to 300 degrees and this is going to apply for 10 to 12 seconds. So I'll drop my time as well and then it'll go ahead and count down for me, okay. Now, with the Hotronics Fusion, uh, you can go in and select a preset that would have just changed all of that for me. So it would have saved me a lot of time just to go into my presets, but I do want to show you the difference of going and doing it manually or going into our presets and just clicking on glitter patterns and having it change, okay? All right, so glitters. Glitter Patterns is a hot pill, so I can go ahead and pull this carrier back and my application is complete. Now this is a 100% cotton t-shirt, so this application is going to do perfectly well with this fabric. Now you can see probably a little bit there where that box is from the 11 by 15 platen. There's a little bit of discoloration in the fabric, but since this is 100% cotton, that's eventually going to fade as soon as enough air hits it. I mean, you can barely even tell on the screen, but it's a little bit darker. But again, as the air hits that, it's going to start to fade, right? All right, so that's a simple application, and I wanted to do the simplest of applications for our first demonstration so that you could see the ease of it and how easy it can be. But let's start to get into a little bit more difficult applications so that you can see how easily pop off the garment depending on the garment that you're working with. So another one of our best practices, and I have them down on a list here, is garment selection. So whenever you're choosing your garments, you wanna make sure that you're working with a solid color that is contrasting the pattern, okay? So you can see my application here is a glitter pattern, and there is some mint hues in here, and that's why I went with the mint shirt, okay? If I were to have gone with, um, the purple or the navy, it would have been too dark of a color for this pattern to really pop. So it really comes down to the garment selection that you are working with as well. So with this mint one, it's gonna be very easy for me to have this pattern really pop off the garment. Now for that monogram that's in there, which is just CAD cut fashion film, I use that as a contrasting, another contrasting color to make more colors of the pattern pop. Okay, so another thing to keep in mind is what color of heat transfer vinyl you're actually, you're going to pair with your patterns as well. All right, so I'm just gonna set that there for now. Load on my new garment. Before I do that, let me make sure that I don't need to switch out my platen for this application. Looks like it's gonna fit just fine. So we can load on our concert tank here. This tank was sourced from San Mar. It is a district tank top and it is 100% cotton. Okay, so going with this seam to find center a little bit, also pairing with where my collar lines up. I want to make sure that collar is dropping off the platen so that we have a nice flat surface to work with. Gonna preheat. Preheating allows all of those wrinkles to get out of the shirt as well as any moisture that could cause the adhesive to not transfer correctly. Okay, so I'm going to apply this pattern. This is also a sparkleberry pattern. 
I'm just going to attack this for three to five seconds, okay? Since I'm laying in a new or a different type of heat transfer vinyl for a second application, this is only going to require me to hit it for three to five seconds just to activate that adhesive enough to start adhering to our fabric but also speed up production time and eliminate any chance of our design shrinking a little bit. Now with this design, you can see that I'm peeling that off a little slow because if I do it fast, there's a tendency for your design to actually get distorted because it's still warm and it'll actually uh, move with the heat, the, when it's heated, it'll actually distort a little bit. So whenever you're working with a hot pill material, be sure to pill that back slowly so your design's not getting distorted. All right, and I'm gonna place my coral fashion film in there. Now you can see how that monogram's really popping off of the garment so it's not getting lost in this design. If I were to have kept the monogram as the pattern, the monogram would have gotten a little lost in this design. So comparing it with a contrasting heat transfer vinyl, something that's gonna bring out another color in the pattern, really helps with bringing out the dimensions, the design, and whatever other personalization aspect that you really want to pop off the garment. Susan, you asked me to repeat the shirt brand. For the ruffle shirt that we printed the Peter Cottontail design on, that was Ruffle butts. And the one in the back is Cavio, correct? So if it's fringe, it has Cavio. It is Cavio. Okay. So that completes this application. Okay. So this is a pineapple design paired with a uh, pineapple pattern and then paired with coral fashion film to really bring it out. Okay, so best practices to take away from this design is your garment selection, choosing a color that is going to allow the pattern to actually pop off of the shirt, and then also choosing a contrasting color to bring out any personalization that you really want to stand out for the item that you're pressing. Okay, so we are going to be just applying all garments today, but keep in mind that our patterns work well with accessories as well. So if you're adding monograms or personalization to bags or shoes, this is a product that's going to work well with those too. Okay, for our next application, this is gonna touch on a, another best practice, and that is pairing it with a contrasting color like we did the last one, but choosing a color that's actually going to match the pattern, but allow the garment the way that it should in order for it to stand out and not get lost in the garment. So we have a heathered garment here that we're going to be applying it to. So therefore, I'm going to do an outline. Okay, so this design is going to allow the pattern to set inside of it. And the solid color is going to be the outline so that the pattern's able to really stand out on that garment. All right, so as one of our attendees mentioned earlier, designs are hard with patterns because they can get so lost in the garment. So we wanna make sure that we're doing an application paired with another material or with a certain garment style that's going to allow us to get a nice finish that's really going to stand out, okay? That is the key to working with patterns. All right. So we're gonna get this centered on here. I rotated my 11 by 15 to a landscape view so that my design is able to fit across. And we have a nice flat pressure as well because no seams are getting in the way. I can actually pull this back a little bit because my shoulder seams are laying on the platen still a little bit. Now I'm going to preheat. Preheat only takes a second or two. All right, I'm gonna lay down my fashion film design. So earlier we talked about tacking, okay? This is where tacking is really going to be an importance because we are applying a, fat, uh, a smooth, lightweight material that can shrink under high heat. All right, so I'm only gonna hit this one for one to two seconds because I don't want any chance of this shrinking at all because I need this design to really like 
directly fit in there, okay? So tacking for just one to two seconds is going to allow the adhesive to reach its melting point, but not start to shrink underneath that high heat. Okay, so now I can go in with my pattern and drop it into its corresponding place with the matte heat transfer vinyl, making sure I am hitting all of those open areas. You can see it was easy for me to drop a little bit of personalization down here with my contour cut up here to go around the pattern. All right, so we'll apply it for its full application now, which is 300 degrees for 12 seconds. Hi, Sherry from Northern Wisconsin and Elisa from Southern Ohio. Everyone else that commented in earlier, thank you so much for joining us. Feel free to comment any questions. All right, so this is a hot peel. I can go ahead and peel this back. And now my design is complete. Okay. So that is pairing the glitter transfer with a fashion film outline so that the design really stands out. Okay, so it adds a little bit more to it. So that personalization really pops off and you can still see that glitter finish. I'll hold this up to the GoPro so you can really see the glitter in there really pop off that design. Okay, and then the matte fashion film just really complements that other light purple color that was in there. Okay. All right, so we covered pairing it with a, um, a solid heat transfer vinyl. We did fashion film, now let's pair it with glitter flake to really make the glitter stand out on our garment. All right, so I'm gonna keep my 11 by 15 as is and load on our next garment, which was sourced from Pennant Sportswear. And there's a really cool aspect of this garment that I wanna show you guys, and it's something that Pennant is selling a lot of. It has a lot of popularity on their website. So this is a piping sleeve, gives it kind of like a jersey detail and it's all glitter, okay? So they do glitter threading in that piping and they also offer it in different fabric types, okay? So the garment itself, the whole part of this garment, like the majority of it is just a cotton poly mix and it's a little bit heathered, and then they offer the piping in different fabrics. So we have, this is a cotton and metallic thread, but they also offer it in suede and velvet finishes. So be sure to go on there and check those out. They do it in different colors, so you're able to represent this to your schools in a variety of different colors if you are decorating for them. Okay, so we'll preheat again. And for our next application, we have all glitter and then a little bit of personalization done in fashion film. So you're able to personalize in a lot of different ways whenever you're pairing stuff with patterns and this is just one of the many ways. So we're gonna be doing a three-step application where we're applying fashion film and glitter. Now, since I'm applying so many different pieces, of course, I'm gonna want to start with the largest part of my design, okay? Because that's gonna mean that I can just drop in every little piece after. So this is gonna be easiest for registration and lining up the rest of my design. I know I have a little bit of personalization that goes here, so I'm gonna drop this a little bit lower just so that I have room for that. And I can actually set that here to see how much room that it's going to take up. So I can drop down even lower. So with this method, we're going to tack each layer until we get to our last pieces of personalization. So I'm doing glitter flake. It's gonna be a three to five second tack. Peel hot, this is the rainbow glitter as well. I think that the rainbow black glitter matches our glitter patterns best because our glitter patterns is being printed on a rainbow white. So pairing 
your rainbow black is going to be ideal for contrast colors so that it matches the glitters easily. Okay, so I'm dropping in my pattern and we're gonna tack that for three to five seconds as well. Lisa, the hoodie is being sourced from Pennant Sportswear. That's P-E-N-N-A-N-T, sportswear. All right, so this is a hot peel. All right, so you can see even this is great by itself. All right, but we, of course, if we're doing this for a cheer team, we want to add who they're representing whenever they cheer. So we have Tiger's personalization here, and then a little mascot to add a little extra personalization. The more print areas that you can take advantage of, the more profit you're going to make. All right, we will cover with our cover sheet and now we can apply for our full application. Okay, so whenever we're working with fashion film, its application is gonna be 320 degrees. So that's actually what we're gonna to want to apply this at because if you're working with mixed media, you're always gonna to wanna to apply at the highest temperature that one of the materials goes with. So even though Glitter Flake applies at 302, we're going to heat this up to 320 and apply all of them at 320 so we make sure our fashion film is getting its full application. Because this is at 300, I'm just gonna apply it as is, but just keep in mind that fashion film does apply at a different time than glitter flakes. So if you are applying those two together for mixed media, be sure that you are applying them at the highest temperature that it goes. So fashion film, 320 degrees for 15 to 20 seconds. It's not going to hurt the glitter design, uh, the pattern, nothing. It is capable of reaching a higher heat without damaging it. It just is, it's able to apply at a lower temperature in case you're decorating heat sensitive items or accessories. Okay, so that completes this application. All right, so you see what I did here? I used great contrasting colors. I used a black heat transfer vinyl that matches the rainbow effect that our patterns has. And not only did I add um, black glitter flake, but also some personalization with the fashion film. I went with fashion and film and an open area of this because it's going to make this lightweight garment still stay very light, okay? So I actually only have one layer of heat transfer vinyl on this garment because I was able to knock out this, um, the top part of my cheer design and drop in the pattern and then I kept this very light, the bottom part of this design by creating a knockout with that, okay? And then fashion film is still a very light heat transfer vinyl, so it's keeping this design still very light even though we have three different types of heat transfer vinyls on here. We have our glitter patterns, our glitter flake, and then also our fashion film. All right, so that completes our demonstrations for today. So I just want to go down our list here and make sure we hit all of our best practices whenever we're working with our patterns. Okay, so choosing your pattern, make sure you're choosing bright, vibrant finishes, nothing that's going to get lost in the garment or design. Now that we're bringing up garment, garment needs to be a solid color, nothing, or heathered, uh, anything that's not going to allow the pattern to get lost in that. And then artwork creation, of course, you wanna go with solid pieces, make sure that you're contouring with a contrasting color if you're working with heathers, um, or keeping the design a complete solid transfer, okay? All right, uh, cutting and masking, make sure that you are always test cutting before you send your design to cut. But if you're already cutting glitter flake, you know the, the cutting instructions or specs for cutting glitter patterns. If you don't know those, it's on the Stahl's website. So you can go on the website and download the application instructions. We will have uh, cutting specs anywhere from Silhouette Cameo or Cricut or Brother Scan and Cut all the way to Graph Tech and Roland. So you don't have to guess what specs you should be working with for glitter patterns. 
Okay, and application. Just be sure that you are always following the application instructions because that is our recipe for getting these to stay durably. All of our pat glitter patterns are tested up to 50 washes, so you should have no problem with customers coming back and asking if something's falling off of their garment. So just be sure that you're following those key instructions because you're not going to have any issues with dura durability if so. Okay, so before we end, I just want to make an announcement. We are doing a workshop Wednesday at our Stalls facilities. So that includes Stalls Texas, Stalls Corona, Stalls Arizona, and Stalls Florida. This is going to be a four hour event where we are teaching you unique ways to make profit with your heat press. This doesn't include owning a vinyl cutter or print cut systems, it's going over all the benefits of just having a heat press and all the things that you can create with it. So if you're not signed up for this already, and we also are providing lunch, so free food is great as well. So if you're not already signed up for this, be sure to go on the Stalls website. It's on the Stalls events page. So you can just sign up there and then you will be able to um, join your uh, Stalls professionals that know all there is to making money and profiting with your heat press. So. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you Monday morning on The Monday Show.